Hello and welcome to this video on how to run an exploratory factor analysis in the M plus software. My name is Christian Geiser. I'm an instructor and statistical consultant with Quantfish. On this channel, I present weekly statistics tutorials, usually related to multivariate statistical methods and often including the M plus software. If this is something that interests you, then please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional resources, including a link to my free weekly statistics newsletter and links to additional videos and workshops. In this video, I want to show you how you can specify an exploratory factor analysis in the M plus software. M plus is actually a great program for conducting exploratory factor analysis because it has many functions that other programs don't have, such as, for example, including missing data in the analysis, either by using full information maximum likelihood estimation or multiple imputation. Those are two good modern um, methods for addressing missing data. And so many standard programs make it harder to do that, for example, SPSS. And so in M plus, it's very simple to include missing data. Also, M plus has options for doing um, a proper exploratory factor analysis with categorical data, meaning if you have binary or ordinal items, then M plus will provide you with the proper methods for that, whereas other programs such as SPSS typically assume that your items are continuous and that's often not the case. And so then for ordinal data or binary data, M plus has more sophisticated options for running an exploratory factor analysis properly. In this example here, I will focus on continuous data, but I'll, I'll tell you how you can also run this for uh, items that are not continuous, or how you would deal with that. In my data set here, I have a bunch of ability test related variables. And so I'm going to analyze two subscales or test halves from a mental rotations test, a spatial ability test. And then also I have four subscales from a math achievement test. So I'm going to use these six variables in my exploratory factor analysis. They're listed here under use variables so that the other variables in my names list will be ignored. And you can see I have some missing data here. The missing values are coded as negative nine and M plus will automatically um, include them, any missing values in the analysis using full information maximum likelihood estimation in this case as the default for continuous variables. Now, if you had non-continuous variables, like for example, binary or ordinal items, then you would have an additional statement here where you would list the same variables again. And then before the equal sign, you would write categorical. So categorical equals MRT1, MRT2, and then the other variables that are non-continuous or that are only ordinal or binary. And so then M plus would automatically apply a proper estimation method for ordinal data. In this case, we don't have to do that because the scores here are continuous. So next is that under analysis, we specify type equals EFA for exploratory factor analysis. And then we list the factor solutions that we would like to look at. So in this case, I want to look at the one factor model, single factor, see if all variables um, or the covariances between the variables can be explained by a single factor, a single ability factor, or whether I need two factors to explain these data. And so if you were um, wanting to um, explore more solutions with more factors, you could write one, three or one, four or one, five, and then M plus would give you all the solutions from one to up to five factors or however many you specify as the second number. And M plus will also compare those different models here to keep matters simple. I will only show you this for the one factor model and the two factor model. So you get the idea. And then of course you could um, run this for more than two factors. The plot option is also useful because it allows us to take a look at a scree plot, which we often like to look at for determining the number of factors. We can then look at the eigenvalues and we can see how um, the 
uh, scree, so say where the scree would begin, so where's the steepest decline. And so that's something that is provided in M plus under the plot to option. So let's run this analysis and take a look at the output. The first thing that we get here is a warning that says that in this data set, there are cases that have missing data on all the variables that we included in the analysis. And so that just simply means that there are 35 cases in the data set that did not take either the MRT test or the math test. They might have taken one of the other tests in that study. And so obviously when these individuals didn't take either the MRT or the math test, then they don't provide any information for the analysis and so they can't be included. However, all individuals that contribute to at least one variable will be included in the analysis using full information maximum likelihood. You can see that even without those 35 cases, we still have a really nice decent sample size, 552 cases. That should be enough for a, um, a maximum likelihood factor analysis with continuous data. You can see here the estimator that's used by default for continuous variables is maximum likelihood. That would be different if you had ordinal data. And then also the default rotation method is geomin. With the rotation subcommand within the analysis command, you can pick a different rotation method. And M plus has a whole bunch of uh, rotation methods that are offered. You can find them in the M plus users guide online. You can take a look at what they have. And so by specifying analysis colon rotation equals, you can pick a different rotation method. Geomin is an oblique rotation method, meaning the factors will be correlated. So this will be an analysis with correlated factors, which is typically something that makes the most sense because usually factors in the social sciences are not um, orthogonal or uncorrelated. So there's some co amount of correlation and so you might get a better simple structure too if you allow for correlated factors. Okay, next is the um, covariance coverage. So this gives you a sense for missing data. So there were three different missing data patterns with um, basic analysis. You could take a look at the missing data patterns um, in more detail. You can see that covariance coverage was high for the covariances and variances, including the mental rotations test. So 92% of cases provided data for that. And then um, there was some missing data for the math test, so for the covariances between MRT and math, there's about 74% data present. So 74% of cases provided data for the relationship between the MRT and the math test. So in other words, these individuals took both these tests. And then there's also, there's 82% coverage for those covariances that include the math test only. So you can see there were some individuals that took only the MRT, some individuals who took only the math test. And so therefore we have these variations in the coverage, but overall it's decent. Um, but you would lose a lot of data if you didn't use full information maximum likelihood. So for example, in SPSS, unless you use multiple imputation in some way first, you would have to, you would lose a lot of data with listwise deletion. Whereas here, you don't have to impute, you just simply use the M plus default, which is full information maximum likelihood with missing data and all the data will be included. And so it's a lot more practical, um, in my opinion, than programs that and require you to do imputations first. So that will all be included. And then you get univariate sample statistics, the means, um, mean and variance, skewness, kurtosis, minimum, maximum, and so on. And then model fit information, a chi-square test. You can see the one factor model was rejected by the chi-square test. The chi-square test is 287.723 for the one factor model with nine degrees of freedom. And that's highly significant. So that model is rejected. A significant chi-square indicates that the model did not fit. And so one factor is not enough. The two factor model fits a lot better. You can see the chi-square is much smaller for the two factor model, only 9.46 has four degrees of freedom and the fit is 
borderline, so 0.05, which still reject the null hypothesis of model fit um, if, if we're testing at an alpha level of uh, 5%. So it would still be rejected, but, but it's not too bad. Yeah? So it's not, that fit is not totally horrible and it's definitely a lot better than a one-factor model. And a two-factor model also kind of makes sense because those are two different tests. One is spatial ability, one is a math test. And so um, that's what we would expect, that there should be two factors. So let's see later, um, let's take a look at the loadings and see if they um, are in line with that two-factor solution in terms of the simple structure. And plus also provides a chi-squared difference test for the one-factor against the two-factor model. Um, this is provided here under models compared. And you can see um, obviously that chi-square difference is highly significant because the one-factor model is very fits very poorly. The two-factor model fits a lot better. And so that difference in chi-square is highly statistically significant. So we can conclude at least two factors are a lot better than um, a single factor model. Next are the eigenvalues. And you can see we have two eigenvalues above one. So according to the Kaiser criterion, uh, we would say, okay, two factors should be retained because two have an eigenvalue above one. And that's, that's not necessarily the best criterion, but in this case, it kind of matches, maps onto our expectation that um, probably there should be two factors. You can also take a look at the plot. And so here, um, under view plots, you can click on eigenvalues, or this is the only option here in fact, so eigenvalues for exploratory factor analysis. So the scree plot is the only option under plot type is plot two. So we click on view and then you, know, you can take a look at your scree plot and then draw your conclusions from that about the number of factors. Here you can see that there's two more substantial factors and then the rest is the, in the scree area, so to say. So probably two factors is not um, too bad. And plus with only six variables, having three factors is, is doesn't make a ton of sense. So let's take a look at the, the rest of the output. And you can see that we get a more detailed fit statistics for each solution. And so the first thing is the, or what M plus gives us the number of parameters and then the log likelihood values and the information criteria. So you could use those as well to compare different solutions. So you could, for example, look at the BIC value or AIC value for models with different numbers of factors and compare them and look at for which solution the information criterion is smallest. That would be another way to um, evaluate uh, or assess the number of factors. And then the chi-square test that we've already seen, which was very poor for the one factor solution. The RMSCA is also very high. Typically people think that about 0.05, it should be 0.05, 0.05 or smaller roughly, so to say. And this is a lot higher than 0.05, so not a good fit. CFI, TLI are expected to be above 0.95 for a good fit roughly speaking. And so those are also not meeting that criterion. Um, and then the baseline model is for a model that does not assume that there are any factors. So this would be a model that assumes zero correlations between all variables. Of course, that is even hor more horrible, like this is even worse in terms of the fit, because this would assume that the variables aren't correlated at all. And so that's not reasonable. So that's something that we can um, disregard, so to say. And then the SRMR is also not looking super good. This should be typically also below or equal to 0.05 for a good fit. So the standardized residuals also are high for the solution. So this is not a good fit. Next are the factor loadings. And for the one factor model, those probably wouldn't even look at because the model doesn't didn't fit well. So let's go down to the two factor solution, which is more reasonable. In terms of the fit, um, you could look at the information criteria here and compare them. So, for example, the AIC is 1,000 uh, or is 11, about 11,026 for the two factor model. Let's see what it was for the one factor model. You can see it was higher, 11,300 almost. So, also according to the AIC, the two factor model would be preferred. And also according to the BIC, the BIC is also smaller for the two-factor model. 
the chi-square we already saw is borderline significant so um, not ideal but better than for a one-factor model the rmsea is now much better 0.05 CFI TLI are also above the thresholds that people typically like to see and the SRMR also is now very small 0.01 so according to these indices the fit would be considered good the approximate fit according to the chi-square it's kind of mm, meh so a little bit borderline let's take a look at the um, rotated rotated factor loadings and you can see that there's a simple structure here that's pretty neat the mental rotations test halves load clearly on factor one with loadings of 0.82 and 0.84 so those are pretty sizable loadings and they have zero loadings essentially zero on um, the second factor so that's good it means they clearly measure the first factor so the first factor would then be interpreted as a mental rotations or spatial ability factor and the second factor has all of the math subscales so you can see that the math subscale subscales load substantially on factor 2 loadings between 0.7 and 0.82 so that's also pretty good they have loadings very close to zero on factor 1 on the mental rotations factor this is a pretty good solution with a simple structure that um, makes sense here where we can clearly interpret the factors factor one is a spatial ability or mental rotations factor factor two is clearly defined by the math test so that would be a math factor and so that's um, a good solution you also get the factor correlation it's because here we have an oblique rotation so the factors are allowed to correlate and so the conclusion would be that the mental rotations factor and the math factor are correlated um, 0.333 that's a medium effect size according to Cohen's guidelines for effect sizes for correlations so there's a modest or medium relationship between mental rotation ability and math ability in these data the last thing that M plus provides here are the estimated residual variances for the variables which are typically not of such great interest and then also standard errors for the parameter estimates for the loadings the factor correlation and for the residual variances i hope you found this video useful to learn more about how to conduct exploratory factor analysis in the m plus software if you did then please subscribe to this channel don't forget to hit the like button and to check out the description for additional videos and workshops and i'll see you next time